beginning with us and we we didn't care about anything but each other and we laughed and played without a worry in the world Now, I thought you would be in the driveway hugging your demolished status symbol. Excuse me? Your natty little vintage sports car. The one that's far too young for you to drive. I heard it was total last night by Simone Russell, of all people. <sighs> I'm just sorry I missed the explosion between you and TC. Who won? As if I have to ask. Nobody. <laughs> That's a good one, Julian, really, yes. How did you make the poor man pay? Did you make one of your imperious phone calls to the school board demanding that T.C. Russell be fired as coach? I hate to disappoint you, Ivy, but there is no revenge in store for Russell. It's only a car. No one was hurt. Thank God. I told T.C. to forget the whole thing. <laughs> could have suffered a serious setback by leaving the hospital last night, Charity. You're still recovering from heart transplant surgery. I know, Dr. Russell. I'm so sorry that I snuck out, but I'm doing better. You said so yourself, right? Don't be mad at her, Dr. Russell. She had a really scary premonition about evil coming back to Harmony. Zeroing in on me. Okay. What are you doing here so early? Visiting Charity. Think she'll like these? I'm not sure I understand. What don't you understand, Mother? Well, it's a lovely gesture, but... It couldn't possibly be sincere coming from me, right? It's just that I know you feel very competitive with your cousin about Miguel. So what are you really up to, Kay? <laughs> What do you call this? Breakfast. It was my Timmy's favorite, oatmeal with honey and cinnamon. Yeah, well, Timmy was a loser. I don't eat mush. Get me some eggs, bacon, sausage, and throw in a few pancakes, okay? Sometimes I forget how utterly disagreeable you are. Let's see what else I have in my kitchen. Babies again. What's the matter? You don't like kids? Or dancers? No. And anyway, I'm not ready for them yet. I have to keep them under wraps until it's time for the little bundles of joy to be sprung on their unsuspecting parents to be. What time did you finally end up coming to bed last night? Oh, not that late. Just long enough to help Teresa with her report. I see. You don't mind, do you? I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't bear to watch her struggle with something that I could just so easily guide her through. No, of course not. To be honest with you, I mean, it was quite a kick immersing myself back into the crane business. Yeah. That's where I cut my legal teeth, after all, you know? Uh-huh. I, I completely understand. Good. I hope so, because I don't want you to get the wrong idea about my spending time with Teresa. We're just friends. A friend you almost married once. You are jealous. Look, Ethan, it's not you. I don't trust her. Gwen, I've told Teresa she knows that we're back together. I've told her dozens of times that there is nothing romantic going to happen between us again. And if you think she's accepted that, then you don't know Teresa. Even this job that she's wrangled from Alistair is just an excuse to spend time with you. You're giving her too much credit. <laughs> Nobody is that manipulative. <sighs> look, look, let's not spoil the morning talking about her. I was hoping the two of us could spend a day together. Just you and I. Really? Yeah, I thought we could have an intimate lunch. Somewhere nice. Somewhere romantic. Yeah, I would love that. Good. I 
know that we did this before, but I have to do it again. Okay, so will you make me the happiest man in the world? Will you be my wife? Get out here on the couch. Oh, you uh, you came out here with me while I made some tea. Uh, well, last thing I remember, we were in the bedroom. I'm sorry I conked out on you like that. I know it must not have been comfortable for you out here. Oh, no. I'm fine, really. All right, well, I'll tell you one thing. We're not going to sleep out here tonight. Tonight, you and I are going to sleep in our bed in each other's arms. <laughs> It's like an engagement ring. Where'd you get that? Come in. It's open. Morning. Hey. Hey. I just thought that um, you could use a home cooked meal since you've been staying at the B&B. You are an angel. Oh. Like the answer to my prayers. Ethan, <laughs> 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 what, what are you doing? Just let her sleep. She has a deadline this morning. I'd hate for her to miss it. Hey. Ethan. Where am I? You're in the library. You must have come down here after I left you in the study. That's right. Yeah. Alistair's report. Um, I came down to get some more research materials. What time is it? It's about 15 minutes before the report is due. Is it finished? Yes, 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 thank God. Um, yeah, I finished it a couple of hours ago. Um, I'll, I'll show it to you. I, um, I, I didn't know if I should uh, print it out and messenger it or just email it. Okay, this is really weird. I can't find it. It's got to be there. I, I know I put the file in this directory. Let, let me look. Uh, it's gone. Uh, all the premonitions and evil returning to harmony. I know, Dr. Russell, that you think I'm losing my mind. I've missed you so much today. I've just been pining for my Julian all day. No, not at all, honey. There was something very strange going on at the Crane Mansion last night. Yeah. Whatever it was, it got to me, too. I had this flash of what my life would have been like if I fell in love with Kay instead of Charity. How crazy is that? Oh, I believe that the flowers are for charity. But I think their purpose is to score a few points with Miguel. Right? What a rotten thing to say. If I'm right, it's a rotten thing to do. When is this going to stop, Kay? When you stop putting John's and Charity's and everyone else's happiness before mine. And not a moment before. You're right not to trust me, Mother. Because with no one else looking out for my best interests, I have to do it for myself. However and whenever I can. Right. Um, hey, yeah, thanks again for bringing this by. I mean, it's really thoughtful of you. <laughs> Anytime. I mean... I would have brought you breakfast in bed a long time ago if I'd known you were going to react like this. Well, see, see, the thing is, you just made me come up with something I would have never thought of on my own. Oh? Well, what's that? Well, I've been up all night. I've been racking my brains about the next step. Now I know what to do. I don't understand. Well, now I have an excuse to go over to Sheridan's cottage. 
you know, I was afraid to charge over there early in the morning, empty-handed, and well, now I've got a great excuse. Look, you see, Antonio was too tired to try and make love to Sheridan last night, but you know, there's no telling how frisky he might be this morning. So now I can show up there with breakfast. You don't mind, do you? Um, I made this for you, Luis. I know. <laughs> I appreciate it more than I can say, but... One, I think Sheridan and Antonio are going to appreciate it even more. I mean, we all know about her expertise in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Come on, we're going to deliver a meal on wheels. Yeah. I don't get it. I haven't given you a proper engagement ring yet. Where did you get it? Actually, I, I didn't mean for you to see it. Why? I just didn't, that's all. Well, let's see it. <sighs> this ring looks awful familiar. Wait a minute. This is my grandmother's ring. I remember my mother telling me that her father won it in the old country during a card game. But how'd you get it? What have you done with Julian Crane? Please, you've had people run out of town for looking at you the wrong way, much less totaling your newest toy. As I said, it's only a car. Besides, the insurance will replace it. <laughs> no, you've waited months for this one. It was all custom painted and had that extinct animal upholstery. And the garage is a wreck, too. Well, it doesn't matter, because there's more to life than owning a flashy sports car. <laughs> For you? Since when? Oh, no, no, no. You can't be doing this out of the goodness of your heart, Julian, because we both know you don't have one. Unless... Unless? Unless you're getting something in return. Oh, naughty, naughty Eve. <laughs> bad, bad Julian. What is it you think you know? No, nothing, Julian. I'm just marveling at the fact that even a cold-hearted, arrogant snake in the grass like you could develop a conscience this late in life. Will wonders never cease? Anything to raise the spirits of a cripple, I always say. If you'll excuse me now, I have to attend a hospital board meeting. Could he still be harboring feelings for Eve? As if Eve would ever leave TC for the likes of Julian. I, on the other hand, am going to have the love of my life back in my arms very, very soon. David, why don't you come over here right away? I think we need to move on with our little home wrecking scheme. Thank Hades for small favors. At least there's only three babies this time. It was that fourth one that put me on edge. Why is that? I still don't know who it's supposed to belong to. Never mind. Uh, I expect it's gone for good now. And I can wreak plenty of havoc with these three on the good people of Harmony when it comes time for them to be born. But I think we need to get them back in the closet now before they cause any damage. <laughs> That's right, back in the closet. All right, that's two of them. Hey, you! Where do you think you're going? Oh. Get him, Crack Pony, before he gets away. Look out! He's running wild!
Why are you wearing my grandmother's ring? How did you even get it? Actually, there's a very simple explanation. Well, I'd love to hear it. I remember my mother telling us that whichever one of her sons got married first would get the ring. Well, since Miguel's so much younger, I always knew it'd be between me and Luis, but I haven't had a chance to ask Mama about it since I've been home. So how did you get it? I mean, who gave it to you? too tired. I, I didn't even think of... Oh, my God. It, I, I, it's gone. It's gone. Please let that whole damn report be in cyber hell, never to be seen again. Hello? To whom am I speaking, please? If this is one of those obnoxious telemarketers, I am sorry, but this is a really bad time. Alistair Crane's assistant. I'd like to speak with Teresa Crane, please. Oh, yes. Yes, uh, of, of, of course. That's me. I'm Teresa. Uh, what can I do for you? Mr. Crane is expecting your report. Uh, it's going to be right there. I'm just finishing it up right now. I'll relay the message. But I should warn you, Mr. Crane doesn't like to be kept waiting. I found it. I, I got it. Tell my father-in-law it's on its way. You did it. You <laughs> saved me. You are my knight in shining armor. Thank you so much. It's okay. It's... It was just misplaced in the wrong directory. It's a common mistake. Okay, can, can you help me email it, please? There it goes. I just hope uh, we didn't... You didn't keep Alistair waiting too long. Well, that's... That's just part of it. I just hope that Alistair likes what I wrote. I'm sure he will. Well, your vitals are a little weak, but all in all, you're looking very well for a young lady who just went through a heart transplant. No more unauthorized nighttime excursions, promise? Promise. Don't worry, Dr. Russell. I'm going to keep a close eye on her from now on. Do you need another blanket? No. No, Miguel, it isn't that kind of cold. I can't stop thinking that something bad's about to happen. Okay, this isn't... This isn't you. It's like you've become someone I don't even know. And I'm afraid that it's because evil's come back to harm me. <laughs> of course! Because everything I do is associated with evil, right? Isn't that what you're saying? Okay, that's not what I meant. I'm just afraid that you've been affected. Well, if you're right... Evil's back in town. I think I may know a way to stop it. Look, how could you? By doing something you brought me up to do, Mother. Telling the truth. I'm gonna go be completely honest with Charity about something she has a right to know. Okay, you know what? You're scaring me with all this. What are you talking about? Grace, what's wrong? I think I'm losing my daughter. Luis! I guess I should have knocked. Um, breakfast is served. Uh, I don't get it. Oh, you see, Beth and I brought you some breakfast. And you still like blueberry muffins as much as you used to? Sure, it's just that... Antonio just saw my engagement ring. I see. Yeah, I was just asking her where she got it. And I remembered Mama saying that she was going to give it to the son that got married first, you know, so he could give it to his fiance. You remember that, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. So, Beth, what do you have there? It smells great. <laughs> wait, wait a second. Breakfast can wait. I want to get down to the bottom of this. Look, Sharon, and I know I didn't give it to you, and I'm pretty sure Miguel didn't. So it must have been you. 
You gave the ring to Sheridan, didn't you? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I did. You gave the ring to Sheridan. Why? My mom told me that I could. Please, Antonio, don't be upset. I know this is the last thing you expected. <sighs> yeah, I'm no kidding. You. I mean, you guys keep doing things without telling me. I, I don't know what to say. But thank you, Luis. Thank you? Yeah. I mean, I, I would have loved to have given Sheridan the ring myself and put it on her finger, but... Uh, hey, I know Mama meant well. Mama probably gave the ring to Luis when I was laid up in the hospital, didn't she? Oh. Uh, I mean... And what a generous thing for you to do. Because I know that you could have taken that ring for yourself and given it to Beth. What a selfless sacrifice you did for Sheridan. And Beth, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate your understanding. <laughs> I don't know how I could ever repay you. your sweet time getting here. Well, you're lucky I came at all, considering I hate you and the work you're making me do. Oh. Well, you could always resign. Of course, that would mean exposing your sordid path to your beloved Grace. Can you imagine the fireworks when she discovers that you really aren't hubby number one after all? And poor John boy. To discover he still doesn't have a mom, only a liar for a dad. Of course, it's your choice. Ivy. Ivy. What you want me to do? I want you to take advantage of what happened here last night. We need to strike while Sam and Grace's defenses are down. Okay. Ivy, just because I had a vision about what might have been with Grace and you had one with Sam doesn't mean they're just going to fall into our arms. It's not that simple. Nothing worthwhile is ever simple, David. I would think you'd be willing to do almost anything to make Grace yours. I would. I do anything to make Grace love me. Kay is a teenager. Growing pains are inevitable. No, Eve, you know, it's more than that. She has changed so drastically in these last few months. I thought. Maybe it was a stage, but I really think she hates me. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. I've known Kay ever since she was born. And just because she's angry at something doesn't mean she hates you. I don't know, Eve. Her thinking is so skewed lately. I mean, you know, she can only see what she wants. It's like she's being guided by some kind of evil. Speak of the devil. Good morning, ladies. I 
I just wanted to thank you again for, for last night. Oh, it's my pleasure, Dr. Russell. Well, if you ladies will excuse me, I don't want to be late for the board meeting. Ladies. What was that? What do you mean? You were being so nice to Julian. The guy who almost ruined your life once. Eve. What's going on? Oh, no, he just... He did me a huge favor last night. Well, I'm having problems with one of my girls, too. Simone got upset last night because she thought that Whitney was coming on to Chad, and so she jumped into Julian's vintage sports car and had an accident. Is she okay? Yeah, she's fine, thank God, but his little sports car isn't. And Julian didn't come after your family with a meat cleaver? Now, see, that's the thing. He was really... He was quite decent about it. He just told us to forget that it ever happened. Is he on drugs? Well, I don't think so. Well, there must be some logical explanation. Wait a minute. Do you think Julian let you and TC off the hook because he wants you back? <laughs> well, Grace, if that's his angle, he's wasting his time. Yeah, they're, they're really pretty. Thank you. You know, you're making me look bad, Kay. I mean, I'm the boyfriend. I'm supposed to be the one that brings my girl flowers. <laughs> well, then I'll pretend they're from you. You mind me filling this? I just used all the water. I'll be right back. Mm, nothing like some nice flowers to pick up my mood. Why? Are you feeling off today? <sighs> A little, yeah. I don't know if my mind's playing tricks on me or if evil's really returned to harmony. I sound like someone else I know. Who? No, it's not important. Listen, not that I know a whole lot about evil, but uh, doesn't it thrive on secrets and dishonesty? Yes, that's how it gets a foothold and becomes stronger. Charity, I have a hunch about why you've been having these negative vibes lately. There's something that I ha and Miguel have been meaning to tell you. I don't love you more than anything. What is it, Kay? Well, I think this calls for some champagne. Champagne? Oh, I'd love some. I think it's a little early for champagne, don't you think? You're absolutely right, so I'll just have to throw in some orange juice and we'll have some mimosas and we'll celebrate the successful completion of Teresa's first assignment at Crane Industries. I'll be right back. I couldn't have done it without you, Ethan. Oh, um, I wonder if that's Alistair's office calling. Maybe you should get it. Hello? Teresa? This is Mr. Crane's assistant again. Did, um... Alistair received my report. Yes, he did. That's why I'm calling. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh... You know, you just don't seem to be getting hey. it, Antonio. Haven't we talked enough for one morning? Come on. I thought you wanted some of this breakfast that Luis and I brought over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure, let's eat. I'm starved. Good. You must be feeling better. I told you guys I had nothing to worry about with me. So maybe it was that prescription from Dr. Russell, huh? Oh, I don't know. I think the best medicine for me was sleeping next to the woman I love. Hmm. Although I'm still mad at you. Why's that? Because you didn't tell me that Louise had given you the ring on my behalf. Why didn't you? I was going to surprise you with it, that's all. <laughs> well, you surprised me all right. <laughs> I mean, I almost had a heart attack when I looked down and I saw that ring on your finger, but... You know what? It's okay. I guess that makes us official now, huh? <laughs> so, what do you think about these muffins, huh? We brought you a bunch of different kinds. Okay. Good. Well, I'm going to try one of each. <laughs> okay. I'll get some coffee. Are 
I know, I know. I should have taken the ring off last night after you gave it to me, but honey, I wanted to wear it for you. And that's exactly why this charade has to stop. Sharon, look, this just this can't go on anymore. My report, um, how did Mr. Crane like it? I'll put him on so he can tell you himself. But I should warn you, he's not in very good humor this morning. Make my day, Alistair. Tell Teresa her report was garbage. Ivy, you don't have to try so hard to manipulate me. We are both after the same thing. Oh, see? Now there's the David I knew I could count on. So tell me more about this vision you and Grace shared last night. Well, we were happily married, and she loved me as much as I loved her. It's just like the vision Sam and I shared. Oh, I knew we were meant to be together. I'm more convinced of it now than ever. Well, then what are we waiting for? Let's turn our visions into a reality, shall we? I'm so happy you're finally seeing things my way, David. Why else would Julian be so forgiving about his precious little sports car? I mean, he must want something. Well, it can't be me, Grace. Julian knows I'd never leave TC for anybody. The bottom line is that Julian did me a huge favor last night, and I, for one, am going to take it at face value and s stop being on his case all the time. Well, just be careful, okay? Because Julian doesn't do anything for anyone without wanting something back. Oh. My sweet Eve. away? I'm afraid so. And I have no idea where he's headed. That's no good. You're telling me if he pops up prematurely, he'll ruin all my horrific plans. Uh, Kay, what is it that you, you and Miguel have to tell me? Charity, can I wait a second? I wanted, I wanted to show Kay something out in the hall. going on in there? Chris, it sounded like you were about to tell Charity that we had sex. Well, Miguel, I know you don't want her to know, but I honestly feel like it's the best thing to no. do. No! Okay. All right, it was a one-night mistake that didn't mean anything. Telling Charity is just gonna hurt her, and for what? She and my mother keep having premonitions about Eva being in harmony, Miguel, and it hit me that maybe we're the cause. Because of our lie about making love. Whoa, 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 we didn't, we didn't make love. All right? And, and it's not a lie. That's not what Father Lonnie would say. He would say that a sin of omission is just as bad as an out and out lie. Oh, okay. All right, well, maybe you're right. But now is not the time. Dr. Russell said the charity's still recovering and that she needs to take it easy. And news like this could, it could set back her recovery or even worse. It could really harm her. I know who you are. Sure, no. I, just, I, can't, I can't go on like this, all right? You know, it's bad enough that you're living under the same roof as my brother, but now he thinks that the engagement ring that I gave you last night is from him. The important thing is that I know it's from you. The fact that it's a symbol of our love and that someday you and I are going to get married. You no, know, I can't wait till someday. Sure, and I'm losing it here, okay? No, no, you can't. We can't let Antonio become suspicious. Not when the shock of finding out about us could kill him. So, congratulations on your formal engagement. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. Hey, maybe we'll have that double wedding with you and Luis after all, huh? 
Really? Because, well, I thought you were considering eloping as soon as you could. Plus, everyone knows how long it takes to plan a real wedding, not to mention the expense. Yeah, you know, you're right. And now that you've, you've met the love of your life and she's wearing your ring, do you really want to wait that long to make her your lawfully wedded wife? No, I don't. You're right, Beth. <laughs> I want to elope with Sheridan right away. Ah! <laughs>